Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about terastalizing and Terra types, the brand new gimmick in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We're going to talk about if this gimmick is any good, if the community seems to enjoy it, and what I think some of its implications could be for the larger Pokemon metagame. Terra types, terastalizing, the reemergence of the Crystal Onyx from the original show. There is a lot that came with the brand new trailer for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. This brand new gimmick is in line with similar gimmicks of the last couple generations, a physical detailed change to the Pokemon designs, something that alters battle mechanics, and newly with Scarlet and Violet piggybacking off of Sword and Shield, something in the interactive overworld that has a multiplayer component. There seems to be an emerging formula for how Pokemon constructs their gimmicks. Not only are raids returning from Pokemon Sword and Shield, but they are now to go after these terastalized Pokemon. You'll be able to play in the overworld with friends and fight off these boss Terra type Pokemon. Now, for those of you who do not know, terastalizing is a brand new phenomenon in Scarlet and Violet that creates a gemstone crystalline structure around the Pokemon itself and gives them a crystalline headdress. It also can change certain Pokemon's types. Those are their Terra types. Terra types will, of course, alter the metagame and allow Pokemon to take on new types and new moves that they did not already previously have. One of the most interesting parts of the Terra type change is that one species of Pokemon can actually be found with multiple different Terra types. So you could have, as an example, a fire type Mudkip. That Terra type is fire. That could be the common Terra type. But you could also encounter Mudkip that has the Terra type of poison, and that could be a rarer Terra type. So it is another layer on the trading and collecting aspect of Pokemon, which is you're going to have to go out there and find Pokemon with a variety of different Terra types. This is probably the piece to this entire gimmick that I love the most. Now, if you guys have watched this channel for a long time, you will know that I am not the biggest competitive battler. I am not the type who gets into the metagame all too deeply. But what I do like is when Pokemon re-emphasizes their founding features. Collecting Pokemon, gotta catch them all, has been the tagline of Pokemon since the beginning. This this adds a brand new layer to the type of Pokemon that we're going to be able to encounter in the overworld. Imagine if you have a rare Terra type Pokemon that also has a shiny variant. Can Terra types get shiny variants? I would have to assume they can. Maybe it'll make the crystalline structure look a little different. So now not only can you have a shiny Mudkip, but you're going to be able to collect two different types of Terra Mudkips and add on that shiny variant. So if you come across a shiny Mudkip, you are just crossing your fingers for which Terra type that Mudkip is going to have. I absolutely love it. Some people might find it a little monotonous, might find it a little overblown, but I think this piece to the terastalizing phenomenon is excellent. I think it gives more credence to shiny hunting in these games, hopefully. I think it gives more credence to the variety of Pokemon that you can catch, the number of combinations you can have on your team. I think it is all around excellent. Now, the Mudkip Terra types are not true. That was just the example that I used. But I think this piece of the feature is excellent. Now, before going any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. And check out the join tab, see if the perks interest you. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting me, that is also always greatly appreciated. Now, besides the type change and besides the crystalline form and all of that, that I absolutely love, there are a couple things that I want to make a note of, some addendums to this feature. I'm not in love with the big crystal chandelier headdresses that these Pokemon seem to be rocking. I think I just need to get used to them and warm up to them, but I'm not, I don't think they look that great. They look a little gaudy. I would have to ask some questions as to why they exist in the form that they do. And are they going to be 
type specific and not Pokemon specific. So any Pokemon that has a fire Terra type, is it going to get that chandelier or that those candles that we saw on Fue Coco, etc., etc.? Are they just going to be static per type? Are there going to be Pokemon that individually have their own terrestrialized headdress that are completely unique from the rest? There's a couple questions with that that I have, and I'm not in love with it aesthetically. There could be an interesting lore reason, there could be some interesting gameplay reasons as to why these Pokemon acquire this look, and of course I am open to hearing that, I'm open to having my opinion changed on that. The other piece to Terra types is of course the raid battles, and raid battles were wholly a good thing in Sword and Shield. The problem with raid battles in Sword and Shield was that it was the only thing to do with multiplayer in the open world, in the wild area of Sword and Shield. It made it so the raid battles got monotonous, they were overused very quickly, they weren't very interesting after the games were initially released. So with the Scarlet and Violet putting more of an emphasis on the multiplayer, putting more of an emphasis on exploring the open world with your friends, up to four of them, all on Koridon and Moridon's motorcycle forms, it appears that they're bringing these raids back because they know that raid battles as a concept worked out really well in Pokemon Go, brought it into the main series game, and people have largely liked it. Raids are fine, but there needs to be more to do with the multiplayer besides just the raids. It cannot be the, the, the banner feature for multiplayer. It appears that they're getting this right. From everything they've said, a lot of the game is going to be able to be played multiplayer. You're going to be able to go into cities and towns with your friends. You're going to be able to ride across the region with your friends. There was no real multiplayer in that way with Sword and Shield. It was the pretty much like ghost versions of other players running around. You couldn't really get them in if you wanted to and run around the overworld. You could join raids with them through multiplayer, but that was it. So this seems to be more of a one-to-one -one thing, and it's going to be online, not just local. So they're doing some things to beef up the multiplayer. So as long as the, the terrestrializing raids are not inherently the only feature of the overworld, then I think bringing back raids are fine. The other interesting thing about the raid dens is that you're surrounded by a crystalline structure that is reflecting the image of the Pokemon you're battling on it, and I would love to know where these are. Are they all connected underground? Does it have something to do with the big crater in the center of the Paldea region? What is the deal with these raid dens? Where are they located? How many of them are there? Because we have a massive world in this region to explore. Are raid dens going to be randomized, just like in Sword and Shield? Are there going to be static encounters? How early on are you going to be able to access these dens? All of these are interesting questions that hopefully we get an answer to pretty soon. Overall, I think terrestrializing is a good gimmick. It is not the best gimmick Pokemon has ever introduced. That still goes to Mega Evolution from me, but it is not the worst, a la Z-Moves. So it's somewhere in the middle, and I'm open to it rising on that list as well. But I would love to know what you guys think about terrestrializing and Terra types. Do you like the gimmick? Do you like the look of the Pokemon when they're under this form? Let me know down in the comments section below. And if you guys enjoyed this Pokemon Scarlet and Violet video, and you want to see more like it in the future, don't forget to hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. With that being said, I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.